Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another James E Tech YouTube video. In today's video, I'll be going over the CompTIA Security X certification. I recently took this exam a couple months ago in past six exam. I'll be going over my experience taking this exam and if it might be worth it for you to take this exam yourself. So if you're interested in learning about this exam, make sure to watch this video to the very end. Hit the like button and subscribe if you guys do enjoy this video. If you guys are interested in a community of people trying to get into IT and cybersecurity, join the Discord link down in the description below at jamesy.tech discord. The CompTIA Security X is CompTIA's Advanced Security Practitioner Certification. It recently came out in December of 2024, replacing the CASP+. Plus. They suggest having 10 years of IT experience and five years of security experience before taking this exam, which is a crazy suggestion for a requirement. Those requirements kind of remind me of the CISSP. They actually require you to have five years of work experience in the security field, but this uh, certification suggests that you have this experience. So it's not necessarily required, but it is kind of a wild suggestion for a certification like this. This exam is going to have a maximum of 90 questions. It has performance based questions, multiple choice questions, and actually has a Linux lab in it. I'm not sure if all exams have a Linux lab, but mine personally did. And I'll get into that here in a little bit. They give you 165 minutes to take this exam and it's actually a pass fail exam. There's no score for this exam that they at least give you, which I'm not sure if they have a lot of other certifications that do that because all the other certifications that I've taken from CompTIA have all been scored in some way. So it was interesting how they introduced that. Now, as far as how much it's going to cost you to take this certification, if you have the student discount, it's going to be a little over $300. And without the student discount, it's going to be about $530 just for the one take exam. Now let's go over the domains of this exam. There's only four domains for this exam, which most CompTIA exams usually have at least five, six domains. So they have governance, risk and compliance for 20%, uh, security architecture, which is 27%, security engineering, which is 31%, and security operations, which is 22%. So this certification is catered more towards people who want to become a security architect or a security engineer. And if you're someone who wants to work in the Department of Defense, this certification can actually meet the 8140 requirement for those types of roles. Now that we've gone over a brief overview of the certification, now let's go over my experience taking the certification. I decided to take the certification a couple months ago because I took the Security Plus and CYSA Plus a little over a year ago, and I did want to renew both of those certifications. A reason why is I saw that CompTIA rebranded it from the CAS Plus to the Security X certification. I did miss the beta period where they actually allowed you to take this exam for $50. Um, I did miss that period, but I did want to take the certification to renew those other certifications and just to see how hard it was and to gauge my knowledge. I went ahead and purchased this exam with the student discount. I actually got a retake assurance voucher. Reason why is because I actually wanted to take this certification on a whim without studying. I didn't really want to waste time buying a st uh, study guide and getting a practice test, stuff like that, and actually studying for the exam. Because a month prior, I took the Cisco cybersecurity certification, which kind of overlaps with the things that you'll learn in this certification. So I just wanted to take a couple practice tests before taking this exam and getting the retake assurance for an extra 30 bucks allowed me to take this exam for the first time without studying. So that's what I went ahead and did. Now, as far as the actual structure of the exam that I took, I had 78 questions, three performance-based questions and one Linux lab. The three performance-based questions are at the beginning, just like any other CompTIA exam. And the Linux lab actually pops out at you at a random point in the exam, kind of like the CCNA, um, where it just, at any random time, you'll get this Linux lab. I actually was not even expecting this to show up, but unlike the performance-based questions, once you finish the Linux lab, you actually can't go back and make any changes. So once you make the configurations, you can't go back and do anything else. So I finished the exam in a little over two hours. I skipped past the performance-based questions at first because those take the most time in my opinion. I did all of the multiple choice questions and then went back and did those. Um, the test did feel pretty difficult. I would say when I was done with the test, I felt 50-50 that I passed. It actually didn't tell me when I was done with the exam that I passed or not. I had to go online to a cert metric and see that I passed which was very interesting because I thought I failed at first, but I thought it was about a 50-50 by the time I was done. Most of the questions I did feel good about. Um, there were some acronyms in some questions that I had no idea about, so some of those did throw me off. This exam did feel more difficult than the CYSA+, Plus. it did feel more technical. An example of that would be the scripting questions that I got. In the CYSA+, Plus, they were pretty broad with the scripting questions, but this exam actually went over some uh, PowerShell, uh, Python, and Bash, things like that. So I would know a little bit about scripting languages before taking this exam. 
The performance-based questions didn't feel too hard. They were pretty similar to the CYSA Plus, in my opinion. Um, they give you a topology of computers generally, and they'll give you an incident or something that happens. You have to identify where it is in the environment and ask a, uh, answer a couple multiple choice questions. It's more so just like a interactive multiple choice, multiple answer question. That's usually what their performance-based questions are like. Now for the Linux lab, they give you a VM and a set of requirements. Generally, you should know how to identify certain processes within Linux and how to identify um, network connections but uh, on a Linux system. You should also know how to terminate certain processes and how to rem remediate basic threats on uh, Linux. It didn't, it wasn't very hard. I, like I said, I was not expecting this lab at all. And with me, I'm not a, I'm not an everyday Linux user and I was able to navigate this pretty easily. It's a normal Linux system. I think it might've been CentOS or something like that. You could use help commands and stuff like that. So if you don't know how to use the commands, you could use man, for example, and figure out how to use the commands. But if you're not familiar with Linux, I would definitely get to know how to use Linux before this exam. Now let's get into if this certification is worth it for you. The bottom line, the Security X is worth it for you if you're mid-career and you already have a couple CompTIA security certifications and you want to renew the certifications. So obviously, if you get this certification, all of your lower CompTIA security certifications will get renewed, which is why I personally took this certification. However, if you're midway through your career, I don't think you necessarily need this certification to advance further in your career because work experience and technical experience will trump vendor neutral multiple choice certifications. Um, this certification goes over some technical knowledge, but it doesn't really go deep into everyday cybersecurity tasks. If you want to get into hands-on skills and hands-on growth, go for a certification like the Blue Team Level 1, which goes over defensive security, or something like the PJPT from TCM. Those are just two to name. There's many more out there that you can name that are hands-on and are very practical. While those certifications may not be as recognized as CompTIA certifications, they do give you more hands-on skills that employers generally look for. This certification would be a good choice if you're someone who has the Security Plus or CYSA Plus, and you want to get the Next Step Up certification to renew your older certifications. This wouldn't be a bad choice if you're doing that. Now let's see how these certifications compare in the job market. Um, I'm going to be using Indeed for this, and I'm just searching throughout the United States. The Security Plus has over 20,000 job postings for it. Obviously, the Security Plus is a more general security certification. A lot of IT positions ask for the Security Plus, so a lot of cybersecurity positions are going to be included in that as well. But some IT positions, a lot of IT positions, will not ask for CYSA Plus or the CAS Plus. So that's why that number might be a little more inflated. There are over 900 job postings for the CYSA Plus or the Cybersecurity Analyst Certification from CompTIA. And the CAS Plus has about the same amount of job postings as the CYSA Plus. But if you look at the Security X, there's only 75 job postings for that certification. So it goes to show how the CAS Plus is still asked for in job titles and how employers aren't generally recognizing the Security Plus more than the CAS Plus yet. So if you do obtain this certification, which I've personally done this, in your resume, I would put CAS Plus after Security X because there are, as you can see, many more job postings that recognize CAS Plus, but not as many that recognize Security X, even though they're the same certification. So my advice for you, think of the Security X as an advancement or renewal certification, a way to advance your career a little further um, and keep your CompTIA certs renewed. Um, experience plays the, be the biggest role when applying for jobs. So honestly, if you don't have a job yet in cybersecurity, get a lower CompTIA certification like the Security Plus or CYSA Plus that are more recognized in this certification before you get a job. After most entry level certifications, having technical work experience plays a bigger role when applying for jobs. So depending on your situation, it may or may not be worth the $500 investment. So that's going to be my video on the CompTIA Security X certification. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the certification. And if you've taken it yourself, give some tips um, on other people who may want to take this certification as well. If you want to join the Discord, that is going to be linked down in the description below at jamesy.tech discord. We have over 500 members in there. Thank you guys for joining the Discord. It is a great community of people who are getting into IT and cybersecurity. So if you guys are interested in all, once again, that is in the description down below. Once again, thank you guys for watching this video. This is Jamesy Techs. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.